Hi there, I'm Erica, half of Feel Your Core. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you like these videos and would like to see more of them, please like and subscribe. So today we are doing lengthening and strengthening of the core. So that means the back, the front, and the sides of those trunk muscles. So right here, I'm starting in a quadruped position, so hands and knees, and starting with the cat-cow exercise. So when I round my back like this, this part's considered the cat, and then going into the extension portion is the cow. So what I'm focusing on here is an exhale to scoop my abdominals in and up, supporting my back in the round or flexion position, pressing my arms uh, nice and firmly in to the mat, kind of pressing up and away, actually trying to get as long as I can in the arm and through the back of what I like to call my wings, the back of those shoulders, as I inhale and exhale and move from flexion round to extension, flat or arched back. So again, really working with my breath here, exhaling to round inhaling as I think about pulling my chest across the mat and up the wall in front of me. I'm going uh, head to tail in the round position and then head to tail also in the extended position. Again, both times thinking about how much length can I get in my spine in flexion, round, and in extension, arched or flat sometimes. All right. So again, thinking about the articulation of my spine in that exercise and uh, length through the spine at all times. Here I'm just sitting back in a child's pose for a nice counter stretch here, just taking a moment to breathe, uh, expanding my rib cage front to back and side to side as I inhale and exhale. Next up, I'm taking this cat-cow exercise to the next level. I'm introducing a foam roller, um, which, you know, if you have a foam roller, great. If you don't, you can also just kind of slide your arms forward. One of the great things uh, that you can do if you don't have sliders or a foam roller here is maybe grab two paper plates uh, and put your hands on them and then slide those forward if you're maybe on carpet. All right. So as you can see here, Again, going from that round position, that flexion position, and then going into extension. You'll see me take a little bit more time between flexion and extension because this is very challenging. I'm doing my very best to keep my um, pelvis, the bony structure of my hips, over my knees as I go forward. I don't have a mirror to be able to check, so I'm really just going by feel. And another thing you'll notice, as I get more extension through my spine and then extension through the shoulders as well, um, it, it gets really, really challenging. <laughs> if you look closely, you'll see me shaking. And sometimes the farther I go forward and the more stretch that I get, um, I tend to move those hips forward. So again, I'm being super mindful here. Also, all the way through the spine, you'll see me kind of checking in with where my head is. I want to keep my head on my spine. Here's that um, little reach forward through the pelvis that I don't really want um, that you see there because I went out a bit further. Uh, you'll also see me throughout here um, moving my arm and hand position because I'm just uh, what I tell my clients all the time. Sometimes you have to just play, find out what position is, is best for you to get the ultimate maybe length or lengthening. I just said that. <laughs> or, you know, what feels better in the body? You know, what allows you to really take quality breaths, inhales and exhales. So that's what you're seeing here with me playing around. What if my arms are a little bit wider? What if I, you know, start a little bit closer to the rest? Um, what I did find in this exercise is that I did prefer to start a little bit more into the forearm because um, being on the forearm as I went into extension actually helped me be more stable. But again, play with it. See what works for you. All right, final exercise here. Uh, I'm going to grab those hand weights behind me. These are five-pound hand weights. You do not have to use hand weights, uh, but I did choose to do a, a weighted roll-up since uh, after those first two exercises, I felt that I was nice and warm and I was ready for a little bit more challenge. So in this exercise, I like to start seated and I reach my arms overhead and then I'm curling down. <laughs> you can tell that was my first one because I flopped a bit there. Uh, throughout these exercises, I'll try to get uh, a little bit more, you know, control 
as I lower and left. But again, like I said, um, this, this one is going to be the most challenging, which is why I saved it till last. So as I roll up, I'm thinking about pressing my heels down into the mat and dragging them back towards my hips. That for me is super helpful and not allowing like my legs to kind of just like fly up as I lift. You'll see throughout the exercises that some, some, you know, efforts are better than others, but again, rolling up, trying to be nice and controlled, um, as I roll up and then again, controlled as I go down. That's like the hardest part. I used to have a coach that would say timber as I came down. Um, so here we go again, you know, rolling up. And as you can see, possibly, um, I am very much working on not pushing my ribs forward. Um, trying not to use my low back extensor so much to help me come up. Um, that's something that I know that I tend to do in my body. So you'll see me trying to self-correct that as I come up. Um, I'm starting to get fatigued here. So you're starting to see those arms bend a little bit, but I am thinking about reach, reach, reaching my fist to the sky, the crown of my head to the sky. As an opposition, I reach my tail towards the mat. Woo! I'll tell you right now, I am so grateful that's over. <laughs> Putting my weights away here. Thank you so much for joining us. See you next time.